Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at the Best Tech Swift. I've got the all black version here. Well, almost all black. We've got that red backspacer. It comes in G10 or micarta. The G10's got that milling on either side. Very, very slightly upswept blade. Full flat grind with an odd spine sort of swedge that looks more like, you know, it's a fuller without the top half of it <laughs> or the other half of it. It's a swedge, but that's kind of narrow back there. Liner lock, right side pocket clip, deep carry, top flipper, D2 steel. Uh, the steel comes in satin finish or this black wash finish or the flats in black wash and the bevel in satin. Eight different ways that you can get this knife. It cost $50.40 US for the G10 version, $63 for the Micarta version, and at White Mountain Knives you can save 10% with coupon code CCE, and that brings it to $45.36 for this knife. $56.70 if you want the micarta version. So that is a good price for this knife. I'm going to go see what Bandit's excited about, and then we'll get to the tabletop and take a look at this thing. Keep watching. Let's start this off with a size comparison of the Ontario Rat 1. Very similar size knife in length and a little more cutting edge. That's pretty common. Like I showed in the uh, Tucson TS-208, where there's a forward choil. Actually, I still have that on my table here. There's a grip section right in there, like there is on the uh, Ontario Rat. This one sort of has that kind of thing, except for it's a bump instead of a cove. So it works for getting a forward grip it's just not comfortable for extended use. It's not hot or anything. It's just a little bit irritating for extended use to be having that finger gripping that narrow band there. We've got a cove milled across the top of the blade, a, a swedge, if you were, if you will, a little bit of jimping up there. It's comfortable enough. It's not very aggressive, actually, because it's so narrow. That jimping can get a little bit hot on the thumb if you're doing extended, you know, pressure cutting where you have to put weight behind the blade to cut things because of that narrowness. It's not the full thickness. The blade stock is over an eighth of an inch. We're gonna, we'll do full dimensions and measurements later on in the video. So you got that on the blade, slightly upswept, huge long belly. I'm calling this a full flat grind because for most of it, it goes up to the spine. A big sharpness toil, that's because the plunge is really slow going, transitioning from the ricasso to the thinness of the blade at the edge. So it just slowly goes down. So they have to have a big sharpness toil there. And that just, you know, leads me even more to think that they've intended you to grip up here when you need to. They could have made it better there, but it's okay. Uh, the pivot is just wonderful. It's a D-shaped pivot pin in there, like Best Tech usually does. Uh, T8 screw here, nice and smooth action. It wants to shut when you have the knife open like that. It's fairly smooth action that way. It's not trying to shut, but you know, with a little bit of gravity, it shuts just fine. Lockup is exactly where I like it to be on a knife like this. We've got a bit of a cove cut in here for the lock release as well. And a little bit of a dip down here, not the usual deeper round one, but it works really well to get your thumb in there to disengage the lock. Works well with the right hand or the left hand, no problem. And of course, this section here collects with uh, skin pretty quickly. And with it all being black, you know, that shows up the dirtiness quite quickly. But I really like this lockup. It's just very, very functional. Blade centering, almost perfect. Really nice. The handle, 
it's also got that cove up here on the spine of the handle. So when you take a look at it that way, you can see that cove starts and it just sort of continues up. So it's good design features on there. And then on the belly of the handle, we've got another cove down here. We've got a nice radius here and then it's reflected over here. Of course, it's much tighter here. And then that looks, looks like it's upswept. And then this looks like it's upswept if you flip it over. So very cool sort of a very stretched out S shape on the knife. The G10 at the very edges is just slightly chamfered. Makes it much more comfortable in hand. We've got these six lines milled in both sides on the handle scales. That adds to the grippiness. Very nice. And we've got a red backspacer. And I think it's red on all the G10 versions. The Micarta ones have a Micarta backspacer, I believe. You can see a little bit of the skeletonizing here. They've used just round holes that they've drilled into the liners. And then they have these black coated liners that are flush with the G10. No lanyard feature over here or hole. I think this knife would be really nice with one of those cutouts sort of like we have here on the knife that I just showed you, the TS-208. Smaller than that though, put right between these two screws right there. I think there'd be enough room. I'll take it apart and show you the insides there a little bit later on. So pretty decent. How well does it cut though? That's a question I probably should have answered first. It's a very good piercing knife. It's got its full thickness about up to here, about a little over halfway down, and then it starts tapering down with the distal taper. Nice and thin back here. Not super thin behind the grind, but fairly thin, so the tip is not super strong, but, you know, designed for puncturing. And then this full flat grind with this big belly. It's great for cutting, great for slicing. And the sharpening job done on this knife is beyond what I've seen in a long time. And when I do the dimensions and things, I'll tell you more about that. So overall, the knife has got a pretty good design to it. I quite like it. And uh, not too much badging on here, just D2 over there and Best Tech knives up there. So nice, clean look. Pocket clip, we've got three little like teardrop shapes on there deep clip button screws on it and goes into the pocket and goes right to the bottom just got a little bit of the knife sticking up of course the red is very attractive of course you can um, dye black dye the g10 black if you wanted to but the other thing about the pocket clip it sticks out quite far so it's away from the handle this way more than it needs to be. Lots of free room in there. If they would have used flush screws in there instead of the button screws, they could have made that even smaller so that it would be a little more comfortable in hand. It's not hot in hand, but it does irritate the back of the palm just a tiny bit. But this shape is just really, really nice indeed. No left side pocket clip. Let's take some time. I'll take it apart and show you how it's put together. So here it is taken apart. We've got some circles uh, skeletonizing in there. There's the screws. We've got the phosphor bond caged ceramic ball bearings. And uh, you know, there's a close look at how it's made. It's a very simple knife. They could have, I think, milled a cove back here and had a pin lanyard at the back. It looks like there might have been enough room for one back here. Would have been a nice touch. You can take the backspacer off if you want and turn it into a knife with no backspacer. If you don't like the red, you can dye it if you want to. And you could spray those backspacers black if you've got this black version and just have an open pillar construction knife if that's what you like because the pins have little shoulders on them right back there. So you decide if you like red or not and you do whatever you want to do about it. So construction's very simple. It does have a D-shaped pivot pin. 
works really well. We'll put it back together again and do the dimensions now. Time now to go over all the specs, dimensions, that kind of stuff. It weighs 131 grams, 4.6 ounces. Not bad for a nice full-size knife. The factory sharpness, it, it was surprising. After, you know, the average of three measurements, 70 bess. Average is 140 bess. Lower is better. That means 70 grams of pressure to cut through a uh, specified monofilament. So, very good. I'll tell you more about that in a second or two. The cutting edge length, 88.9 millimeters, three and a half inches. Blade length, tip to the closest spot on the handle, 91.1 millimeters, 3.59 inches. The thickness of the blade, up here on the flat ricasso there, 3.76 millimeters, 0.148 of an inch, so over an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, the biggest point is right here at the heel of the blade, 25.9 millimeters, 1.02 inches. How thin or thick is it behind the grind? That is right where the black starts. 0.44 millimeters, 17 thousandths of an inch. And again, that's measured on three spots along the main cutting section of the knife. The grind angles. This was astounding. This side, 19.6 degrees. This side, 20 degrees even. What happened on this side is it started at 19.9 degrees, ended at 20.1 degrees. 0 0.2 degrees variation along the length of this blade. That's astoundingly good. This side started at 19.9 as well, ended at 19.4. So that's half a degree variation along the length of this blade. I've not had a knife in this price range sharpen this well ever from a factory. Factory sharpened knives at this price range, that is astounding. Best tech, you did the best. And I've got a spreadsheet, which unfortunately I've not been keeping up to date lately. I've got a spreadsheet that lists those specs, how well knives are sharpened, how thin they are behind the grain. And uh, it's publicly available. I've got a link for it down below my video. And there's over 250 knives that I've reviewed that listed there. And yeah, this is the best I've ever seen. Now, traditionally, 20 degrees per side is what most people say is really good. That is good for, you know, softer steels. You know, D2 is usually around 60. I'd sharpen this, in my opinion, 18 degrees per side. But still, they got it very close to 20 degrees per side. They did a very good job sharpening this knife. On to the rest of the specs. The handle length, 122.9 millimeters. That's 4.84 inches. The uh, grip area in here is just over 10 centimeters, right around four inches, just under four inches. The thickness of the handle, 14.6 millimeters. That's 0.575 of an inch. I don't mind that at all. The handle depth, the widest point along the length of this knife within the grip area is right about here. 26.6 millimeters, 1.05 inches. When the knife is closed, the widest is up here at the flipper. 32.9 millimeters, 1.295 of an inch. Total length of this knife, it's almost exactly 214 millimeters, which is 8.43 inches. So a little under eight and a half inches. Uh, that's the specs. Oh, I didn't talk about, didn't mention the balance point. There it is right there. I wouldn't mind if they skeletonized it a little more. They could reduce the weight even more, make it maybe four and a half ounces, and bring the balance point a little closer to the pivot pin. That's where I like my balance point to be, just behind or just at the pivot pin. What are my summary feelings? What are the pros and cons overall of this knife? The pros. It's... Very good grip in hand for a lot of different grips. 
usually for most scripts. Uh, pivot's awesome. Lockup's awesome. The whole mechanism here at the pivot's very good. You know, solid lockup. Uh, good action, smooth. Flipper works really well. Light switch method, definitely. Just pulling off to the side a little bit. Also very good. The detent, very good as well. Maybe just a tiniest bit soft, but yeah, just very good indeed. The uh, eight different variants that you can get it in, loads of option for those people that want it. Sharpening done extraordinarily well. I really like that. Pocket clip works really well. It's nice and deep. You got a little bit sticking out of the pocket, but not an awful lot. Did I demonstrate that? I don't remember if I demonstrated that, so let's do that real quick. Oh yes, I did demonstrate it. A little bit of extra grip on the side, that's functional, and of course the aesthetic. I like the bright red backspacer, and of course you can change it out. If you don't like it, you can just remove it. And of course you can dye G10 as well. So I quite like this. What are the cons on it? Some people want a lanyard option. They could have made it with one, I believe. The uh, forward grip here, it's functional, but they could have made it more comfortable, I think. That's very minor, isn't it? Um, the spine jimping here, some people are going to find that to be not aggressive enough. They would have preferred the whole width of the blade. That's a very minor thing as well. Button screws that are made flush with G10. Yeah, I don't like that. It's not the end of the road. Uh, it, it's not, wouldn't make this a bad knife for me to recommend. I just prefer that companies and more and more companies are going that way of putting in nice flush screws and T8 screws. I much prefer those a lot. And there's no left pocket clip. Now those cons, although there's four of them, five of them, they're pretty minor each one. Like they, they're quite minor. I like this knife. It's made well. Best Tech's done a good job on it. And uh, I think uh, it needs to be more popular than it is. It's a pretty good knife, especially after the discount, $45.36. Yeah, $45.36 American after the 10% discount with my coupon code. So there you go. I like this knife and maybe you want to get one too. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember friends, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.